Well, good morning, afternoon. It's afternoon. How are y'all doing today? Uh, let's see. Get this lighting a little bit right. So we're doing it at a different time of day, obviously. So that changes a few things. Uh, it's after five o'clock. Moscow Mule in the cup. So uh, my name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. This is our live FAQ that we do every Thursday. We are trying a new time slot at 5 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully more people can watch this thing. Um, and I understand it's possible that might be a little low today because people are getting used to the new time slot. So hopefully you can uh, come and be a part of what we're doing. Uh, if you're new to the channel, this is all about guitar tone, guitar tech, guitar gear, all kind of stuff like that. Um, and we are, uh, so we have a video come out every week, you know, of course, and then we have this live thing on Thursday that we do, uh, you know, various questions and answers live about guitar stuff. If you cannot make it live to ask a question, um, if you can't make, you know, make it live to ask a question, then what you can do is uh, basically you can go over to patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone and you can ask questions over there as well. So uh, that's pretty cool. I'm interested as to why I'm not seeing. Let's see here. You must have a goofed up feed. Oh. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm like, why am I not seeing your comments? It's possible that I was on the wrong feed. Okay. Well, we're fixed. So that's what we're doing. Um, so if you have questions and you can't make it, like I said, um, you know, over on um, over on that, you can go over to Patreon and you can ask questions over there. Sorry, a little flustered. This time slot is like, I've been doing it at 8 o'clock on Thursdays for so long. Um, so... I'm super stoked to have everybody here. We do have a few questions. We, when people ask them on Patreon, we make sure uh, that we cover them because obviously, uh, you know, we appreciate them being part of that. Um, a couple of things in the news as far as Dylan Talks Tone goes. A couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was a week ago, I did a survey and it was like, um, we're going to do some interesting pickups that we've never done before. We're going to talk about some stuff on the channel we've never talked about before. And actually, I don't know a whole lot about it, so i got to do some research. Uh, one of them is active pickups, and the other thing is other pickup technologies. And so, I gave you a choice. Fishman Modern Humbuckers, the Fishman Fluence Humbuckers, or EMGs. What did you want to hear about first? We're using the proceeds from our Patreon to purchase one set of pickups. So, uh, it was overwhelming that everybody wanted to hear about Fishman's. So, I said, well, okay. I went ahead and ordered a set of Fishman Fluence uh, Moderns. I should have those in uh, this weekend. When we get done with the videos about those, we are going to give those away to you because I don't need them. The cool part is I had one particular patron over there on Patreon uh, from Belgium, actually, who said, hey, what if I bought a set of EMGs. Could you do a series of videos on EMGs and then you can give them away? So he literally ordered me a set of EMGs and he's having them shipped to me. So I want to say thank you. Obviously, I don't know if he wants me to mention any names or anything like that, but I just want to say thank you and really appreciate uh, that sort of thing. The other thing I want to talk about before we get into questions is I am kind of tossing around some ideas for some new content on the channel in general. We've never really done interview shows before. We've never done any kind of like, now I'm not saying I want to do like rig rundowns or anything like that, because that's obviously Premier Guitar, John Bullinger, he's got that on lock. It looks pretty awesome. So not necessarily rig rundown, but um, artists, industry people, people who build stuff, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about pedals. I don't know a whole lot about amps. Maybe doing some doing some interview type stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm no Joe Rogan or anything, but I thought it would be kind of fun to to do that kind of stuff. What A, what do you think, number one? And B, um, do you have suggestions of people that you might think uh, would be interested in doing that? Uh, as well as, you know, anybody, any YouTubers or anybody that you think I would collaborate well with. 
uh, put that in the comments and uh, and let me know. Um, so we are hiding comments. People are already getting political. We don't talk about politics on our on this on the we don't we don't we don't do that here. We're all about guitar gear, just so you know. So next time you pipe up with something, hopefully it's not political. Okay. Um, so let's get into some questions. Uh, there's a huge fifth wheel on a truck going past me right now. Uh, let's see. Do to do to do. Brian Locke from Patreon says. You should try some Centauri Toki for a proper happy hour. Uh, it's a solid Japanese Highland Scotch. I know that's not gear related, but he did mention it on Patreon, and I wanted to give him a shout out. Thanks a lot. I actually think my father-in-law's got some of that in stock. I might have to steal a sip from, from him when we're home uh, that way next this weekend. Uh, let's see. Carlos Esparza says, Surely this is a can of worms, but could you run down what active pickups really means electrically? It would help to have one of your dry erase drawings for a comparison to your conventional passive pickup drawings. Many thanks. Yes, absolutely. We will do that. Um, basically, to just give you a rundown, there's still coils. They're still like a normal pickup. The only real difference is it has a preamp. And all of the measurements and resistances and everything are a little different. So that's the short version. We will get more fully into that once we have pickups here and i can do exactly like you said either on screen graphics or some sort of whiteboard thing and really dive into that active stuff and obviously with the fluence moderns um that's a totally different uh pickup you know what i mean uh technology so we'll we'll jump into that uh we'll jump into that as well super cool um what happens when you take completely take out uh, the pole pieces out of humbucker. So what he was asking, uh, he was asking on a video that was regarding um, adjusting pole pieces on a humbucker because you may or may not be aware of this or not, but the original Seth Lover design for humbuckers did not have screws. It did not have adjustable screws in it. It was slugs on both sides. The only reason it has screws in it is basically because Gibson Marketing said people feel like they want to adjust stuff, so put screws in it. More or less, that's basically the reason that happened is because on a P90, the whole pickup was not adjustable, so you had to be able to adjust in individual pull pieces. So they added them to humbuckers. What happens if you take those screws out? That coil will cease to function it will largely cease to function. Um, sometimes, well, and it can kind of have an, a little effect on the tone just being in there because it can play with the inductance of the other coil just because it's in super close pr proximity of it. But the long and the short of it is it doesn't work anymore. It will not pick up the motion of the strings uh, since the magnetic field cannot be transferred from the, magnetic, from the magnet at the bottom of the pickup all the way to the top because those poles are gone. So it will cease to function uh, in that way, more or less. Uh, let's see, do poly and nitro finishes really make a tonal difference? Nope, no they do not. Um, you're gonna get a lot of people that are gonna fight, fight me about this in the comments. Uh, I don't really care. It doesn't make any difference um, in the tone of an electric guitar. In an acoustic guitar, thickness of finish really is a big deal. Um, because it can actually, again, because electric guitars and acoustic guitars are different, electric guitar um, is based on a magnetic field and a string, and an acoustic guitar is based on the motion of air. And so when you retard the motion of air by retarding the motion of the soundboard, then you can have, that can cause a lot of trouble. Where people will go crazy on this and be like, it totally changes the sound because it has so much more resonance when I strum it because I peeled all the paint off. Uh, just because you feel something in your lap doesn't mean that it's gonna sound different in the amp. I'm just gonna say it. Um, it has to do with how our ear works, our inner ear. Um, the bottom line is when we feel vibrations, 
okay? And they've done a lot of research on this, a lot of science on it. I've not done a video on it yet because I've not found the right person to collaborate with on me on this video. But basically, I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek. This video is coming. When you feel a vibration in your body, it affects what your ear hears. I'll give you an example. In the early to mid 90s, do you remember bass shakers that you would put underneath the seats in your car? Um, and what it would do is, even if you didn't have subs in your car, <clears throat> it was hooked up to audio signal. And the long and the short of it is that you would have audio signal go through these bass shakers and wherever there was frequency below say 80 or 120 hertz it would spin a motor with a weight on it very similar to your vibrating uh, motor in your phone that causes your phone to vibrate when someone calls you but it would do it in time and in sequence with the music and it would give you the simulated feeling that there was bass even when there was not because then when we hear where bass should be coming from the audio track and then we have the introduction of that vibration into our bodies we can actually simulate that sound that is a really crude example of that but the bottom line is when you strum a guitar and you feel the vibration in your body uh, it changes what you hear so if you have more finish on a guitar and it's less resonant then it's possible that to you, it in your lap may sound different to you. However, if you hand me the guitar, if you if you take the guitar and you put it in my hands and I'm 10 feet from you or six feet from you because we're social distancing. So if, if I'm standing six feet from you playing through an amp with a guitar with no finish on it, and then I put a thick finish on that guitar and I play it again, you will not be able to hear the difference period bottom line end of story if you can feel the difference it's messing with your head that's all there is to it I'm just gonna say it that's all there is to it um and you know there's gonna be a lot of people that argue with me on that but the science is pretty strong on how the it's the middle ear that causes that to happen uh in fact well, I don't want to get into it because I'm not 100% as educated on the whole thing as I want to be, and that's why I've not made a video on it. But the long and the short of it is, just because it shakes in your lap more doesn't make it sound different to anybody else. There you go. Uh, let's see. We didn't have very many questions this week, so uh, in case you're wondering, I am social distancing myself we're in our motor home in um right outside of daytona beach florida uh we went to the beach yesterday not like one of those stupid florida spring breaky people uh we went to a beach actually if you can you can see it on our music and mascara instagram um there was nobody there there was like there was people like every hundred yards we just went stuck our feet in the water got some sun for a few minutes and then came back but we basically just been kind of holed up in our motor home all week in florida i didn't even want to come to florida but um i had to come here because i had to pick up some stuff for um to tow my jeep and so now we can tow our jeep instead of driving it separately which is amazing uh so that's going to make our life a lot simpler so thanks mike for that you're probably watching uh, i got to meet one of the youtube viewers i had a really awesome time meeting one of our youtube viewers who called me and said, hey, I've got the you know the stuff that you need. Um, so we went down there, uh, stayed six feet away while we got our gear, and then we have been staying here all week, and I think we're headed back to Georgia at the end of the week. Um, it's difficult because a lot of the places where we normally stay are closed, so. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go through some of these questions. Real quick, I'm gonna start at the top. Sorry, I said last week when I was on a live that I wouldn't crunch ice. It's a bad habit. I really wanna learn how to build guitars and I like the content. I wonder, is a roller nut good for a Floyd Rose or a locking nut? Uh, Floyd Roses are made to work with a locking nut. Um, that is how they're engineered. If you use a roller nut, 
it will not it won't stay in tune really because the strings are supposed to be locked because the string it's the funny way they're actually locked at the saddle how much are the Telecaster hot pickups if you have questions about Dylan talks tone pickups um, go to the website and go to the contact area and there's a contact form um, <clears throat> you can go check it out there I think they're about a hundred bucks a piece but um, if you have any questions about that uh, do you know how to make tele pickups absolutely we make amazing ones we make really good ones you can go to uh, Dylan talks tone is someone still making those LED pickups they work like a Morley wah with LED light sensors you know, yeah, you remember those? The the LED, um, I don't even know how they work. I, I honestly don't even know how they work. I don't even remember, to tell you the truth. Um, no idea. Uh, good afternoon. So happy my coffee cup and my lizard spit arrives today. Your coffee cup arrives today. Your lizard spit does not. It is coming. We are having... Things are moving slowly. I will just say that. We have a lot of suppliers who things are moving very slowly. Um, it is really, this whole thing has really, and I'm sure it's hurt you in various ways too. So, so I don't want to get on here and throw a pity party or anything. Um, but man, I tell you, YouTube views are like in less than half. And so then when YouTube views are in half, um, our website traffic goes down and then what we build on the website goes down and then of course that hurts you know me being able to pay bills so um yeah it's been tough and i i the reason i don't talk about it a whole lot because i know you're going through the same thing i mean it's just we're all just this is struggle it's, it's a tough time it is a tough time for sure but answer to your question uh lizard spit is coming i promise it's coming um in fact i'm going to call him in the morning and we'll we'll figure out what's going on uh, with all that. We've had some problems with some tele pickup parts. Uh, that stuff will be here Saturday, I think. So yeah, definitely. Hello everybody, Dylan, have you ever built any pedals? I, <laughs> yes, I have a wah, actually. Um, I built the wah before I ever, this was years ago. And if I could dig it out and find it, maybe I'll make a video about it. I don't know where it is though. I'd have to go find it in my storage, I think. I built a wah. I had this concept that if you put two of them together, it would be better. And so I put two slightly different wah circuits in the same housing. It was crazy. Um, the problem is, is that it was so expensive to build, it was not really scalable. I've talked to a couple of people in the pedal business about possibly doing something with it, but I, I've, I've never really... Never really been able to do it. Um, <clears throat> the Fishman pickups sounded like they had a lot more definition to the frequencies when I tried them. I'm interested to try them, to tell you the truth. I don't know a whole lot about them. I, I, I would definitely like... Oh, see, that sounds intriguing. I'd definitely like to see some interviews. So tonight uh, at 6.30, I have a call arranged. We're going to do it Zoom style because, you know, distancing. Um, if you've ever heard of the rock band from the United States called Saving Abel, um, Scott Bartlett is a friend of mine, and so we're going to try this. Me and him are going to try it first. And then I've got one hopefully coming with another pickup builder. Um, I've got one with another guitar player from uh, a rock band in Texas, um, not ZZ Top and not Pantera, but somewhere in between. Um, you've heard of them. They've been on Sirius Radio. They're pretty awesome. One of their guitar players is a friend of mine, too. So I'm going to try to line up three or four of these and then start putting them out. I think it's going to be really fun. Are you going as crazy as I am with no Formula One? Dude, I just heard today that the Indy 500 is getting, just, is getting pushed off also. I actually had plans. One of my like lifelong goals has been to go to a Formula One race. Now I live in a motorhome. We were going to go to Texas and go to the Formula One race. Of course, that's probably not going to happen. I'm really into 70s thin line deluxes, and I want to hear your opinion about Fender's new Cunef, uh wide range uh, reissues. Uh, I don't know anything about them. 
So, because I've not had one. All of the Fender wide range reissues that I've had have just been regular humbuckers. The Tim Shaw ones are just regular humbuckers. Um, all the ones that I've had so far have been just regular humbuckers. I will tell you, I do have in my possession, well, not, it's, I got to grab it this weekend, uh, a 2020 60th anniversary broadcaster, I think. Is that what it is? And it comes with a resistor to make it into the broadcaster circuit and all that. So we're going to do a video on that. I'm really excited about that. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I'm going crazy with no Formula One. Hey Dylan, what exact parameters does a pickup builder like you tweak when a customer wants a custom pickup with more punch, less mids, more sustain, coil size, wire, and winds? Um, <clears throat> all of the above. So here's an interesting thing. A lot of times when somebody calls with a pickup, and this is just a little insight, when somebody calls and says, I want a hotter pickup, I want more of this, I want more of that, I, usually it's more. Most of the time they don't want less of anything. Usually they want more of something. Usually we end up, this results in a conversation where we really hone in on what your the player really, really wants. And in the end, 90% of the time, they don't actually want what they thought they wanted when they called. And that's not me talking them into something else. It's just when somebody says, I want something with more mids. Okay, let's first of all figure out what amp you're playing, what pedal chain you're using, what guitar you're playing, what's your favorite pet position, what position do you play in the band that you're playing, or are you playing in... Um, at home or are you playing uh, with a three-piece are you playing um, and I refer back to I'd go back to John uh, Bollinger uh, it's like one of my favorite guitar people ever and one of the things he always talks about and he he said this to me I'll never forget it uh, the first time I met him actually and he, he said that every guitar player um, occupies a particular sonic space and so trying to figure out where each of those sonic spaces belongs on the stage and how you fit into that is what's important. And a lot of times, a guitar player wants more. They just want more. They just want to be louder. They want to be hotter. Well, hotter isn't good. Hotter means um, actually less mids most of the time. And that, not necessarily less mids, but for example, if you have a flat EQ, you can't just go like this. That doesn't make you louder. If you want to figure out what part of your signal you want to be louder, then we decide where that is and we boost that part. When it comes to that, then yes, we do figure out um, magnet choice, winds, and all that. But a lot of times, they end up going with a lower output pickup than they think they need because lower output pickups, DAF or DAF, for example, which is a PAF copy, um, stands for Dylan applied for one of my buddies came up with it <clears throat> um, that pickup for example is super low output but it cuts in the right places it has a proper mid-range since a guitar is a vocal instrument like a voice um, we don't just always need more right we need more of a certain thing and so understanding that uh, is important uh, let's see do you have any suggestions from playing live when your amp and pedal board is on the same outlet as the lights? That is actually a good thing. Um, you won't have a ground loop from your pedal board to your amp. Um, a big misconception here is that noise comes from the mains and the lines. If you have a ground loop, we have a video on this. If you have a ground loop from your guitar so, so here's where ground, ground loops don't happen in guitars, number one, never. Um, where they happen is when you have a improper ground potential from two amplifiers. So you have this amplifier, you have this amplifier, and you have a signal line going in between them. And if this amplifier and this amplifier are on two different ground potentials, then you can end up with a ground loop. 
typically, if you have a modern power supply for your pedal board, and you have it plugged into the same mains that your amp is plugged into, you will never have a ground loop, typically, as long as everything is functioning correctly. The lights do not usually, as long as there's no problem with them, and everything is grounded, and never play anywhere that is not grounded correctly, because you can die. Put that on the venue to make sure that your stuff is properly grounded and make sure that you bring gear that's properly grounded. Safety first, okay? Beyond that, the noise from lights comes from the air. It's radio frequency interference, RFI or EMI, electromagnetic interference. That comes through the air. That does not come through the mains. And that is a shielding issue depending on how loud your guitar is. So that's a shielding thing. <clears throat> uh, let's see, does anyone know how wire was invented? I do not. Uh, let's see. I want to ask if magnetizing the Alnico rods with Neo Mags or an electrical magnetizer will make a difference in its strength. It absolutely will. That is how we do it. We actually have Neo Mags on a vice. I do it the super old fashioned way. And that's exactly how, yes, it will make a difference. Here's the interesting thing El Nico 5, El Nico 3, they will not magnetize beyond a certain point. That's what gives them their number. Uh, but they will magnetize less than that. So. Unless you have a problem where a pickup is totally dead, I wouldn't mess with it. Uh, let's see. Does anyone know of anywhere with good quality red torque pickguard material? <clears throat> nope. Trogly mentioned you by name. Okay, so the reason Trogly probably mentioned you by name is because... I have his 60th anniversary broadcaster. He sold it to a friend of mine in Florida, and that friend lent it to me to make a series of videos. So, pretty cool. Yeah, it's, I chatted with uh, him the other night, actually, on Facebook, and we were talking about when I was going to come out with this video and stuff about that, that guitar that he used to own. Yeah, totally cool. Um, <clears throat> can you make an 8-ball center punch scent with black chrome covers? Will this come at a premium? Wiring this into the instrument, do you use the Seymour Duncan wire color code? We do not use the Seymour Duncan wire color code. Uh, it is Ours is kind of backwards. It's not that hard to figure out. We tell you when you buy them, it's no big deal. Um, black chrome, I can do. It will come as a premium. Shoot me a message on, if you go to dylantalkstone.com, you go to the contact thing, and go in there and do the little contact form deal, send me an email. And we can talk about pricing because that is a color that I am not, we don't carry normally. And I have to buy it from a supplier that does not give me any breaks on stuff. So, um, but for that particular pickup cover color. So I'm just being real straight and real honest with you. That one's a little more expensive. It'll probably, I mean, add 20 bucks probably. Not super expensive, just to, I would say add 20 bucks. Um, yep, shielding it is, exactly. You know when you touch a metal component on your guitar and it pops and the buzz goes away? I have some guitars where that pop happens incredibly loud. Is there a reason for that? Okay, so uh, a couple things you want to do here. You want to make sure that you're grounded. Um, make sure that everything in your, in your guitar is grounded. Uh, not everything. Oh, let's see, how do I say this? You want to make sure that each of the components in your guitar is tied to a ground. So volume, tone, uh, the switch doesn't normally need to be grounded and shouldn't be. The uh, Each of the pickups has to be grounded somehow. The output jack needs to be grounded. And something attached to the strings. So like... Uh, on a Les Paul, it would be like a tailpiece stud, for example. On a Strat, it's going to be the claw for the tremolo. 
on a telly, it's going to be the bridge itself. Um, but typically on a telly, as long as you have the regular pickup in there with the metal bottom on it, as long as it's grounded, you're fine. That pop is probably coming from outside the guitar. That, when it's a real big pop like that, it's probably static electricity. Uh, very first thing I would do is raise the humidity in your house. Um, from, you know, if you have that much static electricity that's happening, it's giving you a pop like that. I would say you're probably in the 35 to 40 percent humidity range, and you probably want to get that up anyway for the health of your guitars in general. So I would say make sure that you do that. Number one, uh, and then. Number two, well, I guess that's it. I mean, it's static. It really is static. I mean, that's that's really a thing when it's a pop like that. If you let go of your guitar and it makes noise, and then you hold it and it doesn't make noise, that's normal. It's supposed to do that. But the pop in between is usually some sort of static electricity. That's environmental, normal. Uh, let's see, does having a metal pick guard make a difference in the tone? It doesn't make a difference in the tone, but it makes your guitar quieter. Holy smokes. Uh, if you go back probably like four years or something on my YouTube channel, like almost all the way back to the beginning, we built a couple of tellies with aluminum tops. Man, they were so good and they were so quiet. They sounded so awesome. It's not going to make a difference in the tone though. Um, people are going to make a bunch of noise. If I, if they hear me say that, they'll make a bunch of noise about like, uh, you know, eddy currents and flat surfaces and, but the thing is, is that all that eddy current stuff, you hear people say that like with the base plate of a telly going around the telly bridge pickup, that's going to affect the tone because the magnetic field, it, it's too far. Um, eddy currents need to be like real close. And if they're this far, it's too far for the strength of the magnets that we're normally dealing with in guitars. Now, if it is like some crazy neodymium magnet, I got a Facebook friend in New York City who makes bases with neodymium magnets and they're super, super strong. Then yeah, you have to start worrying about that. But most conventionally built Alnico and ceramic magnets, none of that, not none of it, but 90% of that eddy current garbage you hear on the internet is not is it true it's just too far um because of the way pickup magnetic fields fall off uh it's exponential like the strength of the magnetic field and the effect that anything would have on it here versus here is exponentially less and then here is even less like it's crazy how fast it falls off so really interesting uh, do you epoxy seal any of your pickups? If not, will you ever? Nope, I won't because it makes it completely unserviceable. And if you have a trouble, uh, you just throw it away. And it doesn't do anything. There's no reason to do that. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't make any difference. What are the highest output pick humbuckers on the market? I do not know the answer to that question. I do know the highest humbuckers, highest output humbuckers we make have four Alnico are a four ceramic eight bar magnets on the bottom and they have 15.5k and they coil split beautifully and they sound amazing with good highs and everything they're not even on the market i actually just make them for one guitar brand um a lot of what we do is actually for specific guitar brands um so like a small builder who you know only builds 15 20 guitars a year will call me and say hey i need you know, X pickup and I'd like it built a certain way and then we build it to their specs and then we send it to them um, and we don't sell them to anybody and that pickup is one of them. I need to come up with a different design for that that I can sell that wouldn't step on his toes because man is it good. It's so good. Super hot but it's, man is it good. Would you collab with someone like Dan from Guns and Guitars? You have a lot in common. Okay, here's how collabs are going to work. I want to. I really, really do. I just want to meet some of these people. I don't even care about whatever. Like I, I just want to meet them. Here's the best way that, to do this. If you want to see us interview somebody on our shows, or you want to see a company participate in one of our videos, uh, you know, with a product or something, or, and on the product stuff, I don't even need to have it f for free. Like, I would send it back when I was done. 
what I really want to do is I would like somebody to give me a product to review and then I'd like to be able to give it to, to you as, as all the viewers. I will not keep any of this stuff because I live in a motorhome. There's no reason for me to keep hundreds of pedals and hundreds of anything. So I'm just giving it away. I'm just giving it back to you. So here's how this would work. If you want to see somebody collaborate with us, either a YouTuber, a company with a product, um, uh, a musician for our interview series, whatever, tweet them or comment on one of their YouTube videos and tag me at, with the at Dylan Talks Tone so that we can begin a conversation. But if you do it, it's way better than if I do it. Now, I mean, I could call people up and say, hey, what's going on? But if people request, hey, man, I'd like to see Dylan and Guns and Guitars, then go to Guns and Guitars YouTube page um, and just use at Dylan Talks Tone and be like, hey, it would be cool if you guys could collaborate and put us in touch from your perspective, not from mine. If you want to see that, I would love to see it too. But it's more effective if, if you would say something about it. Because then, um, then, yeah, I'd love to do that. It'd be super fun. Because I think they're living uh, in an RV too, which would be super cool. And I'd like to shoot some stuff. Um, that'd be great. Talk about guitars and then shoot some stuff. Heck yeah, I'm all about it. That'd be killer. Uh, let's see. Have you ever used guitar fetish pickups or parts? I have. Um, the reason I do not talk about endorse or encourage people to use guitar fetish pickups or parts is because I think they're crap. Um, it's very rarely that I speak negatively about anybody's products. Um, do I discourage you from using them? Yeah, but with this caveat, what I will say is if you are truly on a budget and you want to try building a guitar or you want to try doing your own stuff and that is what you can afford, then by all means, do whatever you can afford to modify a guitar, build a guitar, and live that dream of doing that for yourself. I would not tell you not to use their products because I would rather see you do a thing and have the enjoyment of doing it. That being said, I find their products to be very inconsistent. Um, I've thrown away stuff. I've ordered, you guys have no idea how much stuff that just, I've ordered to try and it's just gone in the trash. Like I just couldn't even give it to somebody because it was so bad. And Guitar Fetish has done that to me a few times. Um, and so that's why I don't encourage them. But like I said, <clears throat> if it's within your budget and it's what you can do to further your learning about how working on guitars, I would never discourage you from that. You know, I'd rather see you complete a project than like have fun with it than say, oh, don't buy this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, you know, if you followed me for at all, you know I'm not like that. You know, I'm not gonna say, you know, this is junk or, you know, whatever. I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, and I, that that's a real sincere thing on my part. Like, I would just rather see you build stuff and do stuff you know what i mean so yeah um i've mentioned it to dan and he would do it i'll give him a dude that'd be so cool i would love to meet up with him that'd be awesome uh what emgs do you like the best so here's something that's really funny um we ordered the zach wild set just so you know uh the gentleman who's a who's a patron on our patreon page went outside of Patreon and literally just ordered me a set of Zach Wild EMGs. Um, I do not have a lot of experience with EMGs because I've been one of these people for years who has said, I can't stand EMGs. I can't stand them because I don't like them. And then I got to thinking, a lot of my favorite music was played on EMGs, so I can't even say that. Let me be a little more open-minded about this. And I'm sure you're out there being like, I hate EMGs, they suck. Or you've said that. I mean, we've all said it. Come on, you know, like be honest. Um, you know, in some way, shape, or form, right? But at the same time, we like Metallica. We like Megadeth. We like, you know, we like all these bands that use them. So I'm trying to be more honest with myself about it and just give it a shot. So I've got a Schecter C1 with a Floyd Rose. You saw it in the Floyd Rose video. Uh, that's a buddy of mine, same guy in Florida. Let me borrow it for a while and we're going to do some videos with EMGs and we're going to do it with Fluences too. 
He's super awesome. Let's see. Um, what's it like being virtually homeless? Dude, I'm so far from homeless, you have no idea. This is the coolest, I'm telling you. It is, uh, we've been working towards living in a motorhome for five years and selling our house and get, getting rid of everything and simplifying down. Literally, I have my office right here in the front. So this is literally the passenger seat of the front and you can't see it, but my computer is right here and then my editing stuff is right here and cameras are right here. And then my wife has uh, in the kitchen over there, well, it's, you can't see it, it's not in the shot, but um, the dinette is over there. So she works from home too. And so that's where her stuff is. Um, man, this is the best. It is absolutely the best. The only thing that is causing a little trouble is this whole everything being closed thing. So it's given us a little bit of trouble um, that we wouldn't normally have, but it's, it's awesome. It's so awesome. I don't even care. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, let's see. Um, do you get constipated in the RV because you don't have a true... Dude, our bathroom is killer. I need to do a video. I'll, I'll do a video for our YouTube channel. Uh... Our bathroom is killer. We have a killer bathroom. Super sweet. Super sweet. Super sweet uh, shower. Everything. It's awesome. Um, the only thing that sucks about EMG is that you have to put batteries in them. <laughs> totally true. Totally true. You know, it's interesting. You yeah. Everybody, everybody's getting hung up on like being constipated while we travel, hon. It's, did I say, why is pooping the number one subject when it comes to traveling motorhome stuff like that? It's so funny, but I will tell you, um, it, it's weird, like a week and a half in, you know, we've been living in here now, I guess a month, week and a half in, not even that long. It's literally home. The, the only kind of strange thing is, like, driving 400 miles and being in a completely different space, but in here is the same. So you have a total comfort. Like, and, you know, we grocery shop, you know, one week at a time. I have a big fridge. So we grocery shop uh, one week at a time, just like normal. Um, do laundry once a week. Just everything is normal. It's just the outside scenery changes. But in here, it's all the same. And since you know we're like social distancing right now it's totally all the same have you played a revolta i'm trying to think of what that is i apologize <clears throat> um yes let's see are the jb mini humbuckers any good if you are into the jb mini stuff they're pretty cool they're, they're a cool pickup um Typically, when people come to me with JB and Jazz questions, I refer them to our center punch and our eight ball because they're like the number one pickup that we replace is the JB and Jazz. Um, but yeah, they're good. I have lived in my car and the questions are the number one you get. Exactly. It's for real. Yep. Oh, a Fano Revolta. Yes, actually. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Yes, I played one at Righteous Guitars in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's a really nice guitar. Um, I have I have played one. Yeah, they're cool. What if Dylan pickups would you put on a K a kit SG build? Okay, well since you're here, let's ask. You. So let's do this. Let's do what we were talking about earlier. If you're building an SG kit, I'm assuming you want humbuckers. First of all, what amp do you use? What is your favorite signal chain? Do you have any pedals that are always on? Okay, so do you have a boost that's always on? Do you have a like an RC booster or some sort of preamp that's always on? Um, so amp pedals, always on pedals. What is your favorite pickup in the guitar? 
and do you like to coil split or do you want it to be super uh, super simple just volume and tone okay those would be my baseline questions when recommending a set of pickups for an SG so let's just do this uh, right now while you're, while you're talking and we'll ask answer a couple other questions and um, and we'll keep going and then we'll get back to you if you will answer those questions and then we'll give you a recommendation because I that, we have a few different things but I wouldn't want to just I wouldn't want to give you the wrong thing fender base breaker EL 34 okay so oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay so kind of Marshally EL 34 it's a fender base breaker but it doesn't sound like a blues junior yeah those are cool um are you gonna coil split a lot that's number one if you're gonna coil split which just makes it super easy get center punch and eight ball uh, for sure those are th those are the ones because if you're gonna coil split you're gonna want a pickup that sounds good when it's coil split and those are it they are the bomb and if you do not coil split a lot and you want a super vintagey kind of sound like a like a classic SG early SG then the DAF would be the thing so yeah man cool you guys this has been awesome uh, this has been really really fun um, it's great waking up to a different scene every day dude it is really cool man um, do you have a demo of the Tele P90 yes I don't have a versus video, so we don't do a lot of versus videos is because I don't have uh, enough guitars. Like, I only have a, a couple guitars at a time. So, you know. Yeah, man. I like being able to hide people when they cuss and are stupid, and then you don't even get to hear about them, and they don't get they don't get the satisfaction of being dumb pretty funny um keep it simple i have fenders for the single coil daf's dude get a set of daf's that's what i would get for sure yeah man It'd be awesome that would be awesome what determined whether a pickup will split well okay so <clears throat> when you coil split a pickup you're shutting one half off and when you do that you go from it depends on the pickup so when you go from let's say 8k down to 3.7 which is what it ends up being you don't even have a whole pickup left so it, the perception of volume drop between a whole pickup and half a pickup is so big that it just sounds weak and anemic and so the center punch is something that we came up with some pretty cool design where when you split it uh, it only loses about 35 to 40 percent and it's not that it doesn't volume drop at all but what it does remember we talked about frequencies earlier it gives you a really nice strong mid-range single coil not a half a humbucker it gives you a really nice mid strong mid-range single coil that gives you the perception that the volume has not dropped, even if it, even if the overall signal has come down some, uh, it's still got enough there where it doesn't sound like half a pickup, and it works. It really works well. Uh, it's they're really popular. That's probably those in our DAFs are our our center punches are more popular than our. Man, we've got some angry people on here. Um, let's see. Do you have videos that you... Yes, if you go to the website, the Dylan Talks Tone website, you can see all of that stuff. Um, yeah. John 5 says... And I know he's not the real John 5 because uh, the real John 5 is... A nice fellow. Uh, he buys his stuff in China and he sells it like it's custom made. Uh, for those of you that have followed me for five, six, however many years I've been doing this, 
you know that we've done enough live videos and enough content on the internet to know that that's not how we do it. I'm sure. Uh, so yeah. Do, do you advise against putting something like an S1 switching system in a guitar? No, I don't advise against anything. Uh, at least that. I mean, try stuff. Because it's just going to give you more options. Um, the only problem with S1s is that knob can be a little finicky sometimes. But, you know, yeah, do it. Yeah, man. Uh, let's see. What's the cheapest, best, cheapest costing pickup? I would say any reputable pickup builder that you could buy something good and used off of eBay, I would rather do that than buy some of this, like Mr. John 5 is alluding to, like Made in China stuff that is, uh, well, it all come, a lot of these cheaper pickups all come out of a company called Artec, and they're basically kind of all the same. And so I would stay a if it was me and I was building a guitar and I couldn't afford to buy something, you know, full pop, obviously, um, I would search around for some used Seymour Duncans or some used DiMarzios or some, you know what I mean? Like properly good name brand stuff, but, but buy a used off of eBay or something. I personally, I would do that before I spent my money on a lot of this off brandy kind of stuff. Um, you know, that's what I would do. So, my opinion. Um, my opinion is who I met in Florida for that towing stuff. So, yeah, man. That's it. Uh, have you used MIDI pickups? And is it a good alternative to keyboards? No. I have messed around with it some. I don't have enough to give you an opinion on it. I'm not a fan. But that doesn't mean that they're not bad. I'm just not a fan. But I'm also a let the keyboard play keyboards and let the guitar player play guitar kind of guy. So, you know, there is that. Facebook Marketplace, too, yeah. Tone would aside, does the bridge and the nut affect tone dramatically? Been looking at a Babbitt's. Um, that particular bridge is very interesting because the breakover angle changes a lot. So... If you have a Tele, for example, and you are switching to a Babbitt, it will change how the guitar sounds because the break angle is hugely different. It totally changes how that thing works. Um, what are the best mini humbuckers in your... Are you recording? So, okay, mini humbuckers. Um, I have a bunch of stuff to make some mini humbuckers. If you want some, shoot me a message. I was not going to put them on the website. But I have enough to make a few pairs. And uh, I'll make you a pair. Let me know. Just shoot me a message. Can you do a video on sustainers and how they work? Yeah, that's on my list. I just got to get a guitar with one. Um, if you're replacing a split coil pickup, do you need a special pickup made for split coils? Um, no, not really. Not really. What is your personal opinion on the sound of the Jazzmaster? That's a cool guitar. They're really cool. Awesome. You guys, this has been awesome. It went way longer than I thought. Normally, I go like 35, 40 minutes. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I appreciate everybody that's been on there. Uh, even the even the mean people. They all need somebody to smile at them once in a while. So, thanks for hanging out. And uh, I hope everybody has a good week. Uh, be safe. And make sure that you, uh, you know do all the things obviously we want to stay stay healthy and uh yeah DAF's the 500s um i'm a patreon subscriber is there a separate live chat box or live video stream section on the patreon website um no but you just comment on that there's a post every week that i put up for all the patrons that uh where you can ask questions for this thing in case you miss it um so yeah yeah man thanks a lot everybody uh i've got another thing i've got a thing at 6 30 with a buddy so from saving able so hopefully that thing will go well and uh then maybe you guys will see it on youtube's here pretty soon it's awesome i hope everybody has a good one stay healthy and uh do everything you can to 
stay healthy. We'll see y'all soon.